Welcome back to Amazing Websites Television, the show where intelligent people like you can find the tools to change the rules. So welcome back to the show. Once again, I am in uh, Dubai. This is the Dubai Marina, which is very, very beautiful. And uh, on today's uh, episode, we're going to be having uh, Simon Leung, which is the Google Insider, and he's going to be sharing with us some really cool information about uh, how Google is actually index indexing new websites and a lot of SEO and SEM uh, information. We're also going to be having James Ramco and a lot of really cool uh, tools and apps that you will really be enjoying. So let's just get started with the first section of the show, which is going to be handy bookmarks. On today's handy bookmarks, I have five amazing resources for today. The first one is going to be called Copify, and it is a fantastic site where you can actually get people to write articles, to write uh, sales copy, to write all sorts of things for you. I'm sure that you're going to like it. Our second uh, resource is going to be uh, Live Fire, and this is going to be a great resource that you can put in your blog or in your site so that you will be able to have a conversation exactly like if they will be in Twitter or in Facebook or in LinkedIn. You're going to find it also very interesting. Our third resource for today is going to be called Grovo, and Grovo is the best resource for finding tutorials. Tutorials are absolutely uh, essential for you to learn how to use the internet and on this one you will find the ultimate tutorials for every single piece of software and everything that you can imagine. Our fourth resource is called Splash Posts and this is a great tool so that you will be able to uh, s uh, sell stuff on Facebook. I mean it's just the best resource that I have seen on uh, actually doing marketing on Facebook and you're going to absolutely love it. Uh, and the last resource that I have today is called Media Hint, and this is absolutely fantastic. If you are used of using uh, Netscape or uh, using uh, Pandora or uh, Hulu, uh, that only works in the United States. And let's say that you're going to be traveling, and if you would like to also see this abroad, you just install this free uh, plugin in your uh, Firefox. Uh, browser and you will be able to actually watch channels all over the world. Well, those are the five resources now stand that we go to the next section of the show, which is going to be Advanced Marketing Strategies with James Trump. James Trump here with an SEO news tip. This week I'm going to cover how you can find out what Google would like your site to be about. So here's an exercise. Go to your website and have a look at some of the words on your page or perhaps your page title. Type in your main topic into the Google search box. Then scroll down to the bottom of the page and see what the related searches are. That's what Google would like to see on your website where relevant. So let's just take an example. We would search for office equipment that might be a search phrase and then we will scroll down to the bottom of the page and we will see what the related phrases are now if I was in that business and I had any of these related searches then I would be making sure that I make one page per related topic and then I'll make sure these are findable with my navigation structure on my website that way Google is getting a really good feel for what your site's about and it's relevant the next step, of course, is to put really useful content on each page. Pictures of what the page is about. Descriptions. Specifications. A clear call to action on what you'd like people to do, and now you're cooking. You've got a good website with good SEO that is valuable for a human. You might even get the phone to call, or forms filled out, or someone ordering something if you keep doing this. If you could do this ten times a week, you would end up with a huge website in just one year from now. 
So go and do the exercise. Go to Google, type in the phrase that describes your business in the same sort of detail that someone searching for your business would use and scroll down to the bottom of the page and see what the related terms are and start building out your website. On today's episode, I have uh, the privilege of having a Google Insider. I'm not, not going to do this because he actually was a real Google uh, Insider, somebody that knows a lot about uh, how the uh, uh, God of the Internet works. And uh, he's my very good friend, uh, which now lives in Hong Kong, but he's uh, from the U.S., my friend Simon Leon. Simon, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ernesto. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great. Um, you know, I, I, I'm always fascinated by all the stories that you have about uh, your time with Google and all the things that uh, happen, uh, that are happening right now. You're really up to date with all the crazy things that Google sure. is doing and, uh, and how they are affecting all the businesses in the world. So can you, well, f just very briefly uh, give us a little bit of background of... Uh, 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 what you're doing uh, right now, and also a little bit of your your story in Google. Wow, a little bit. Huh? I can go all day on yeah, this. Just, <laughs> just try to reduce a huge, st uh, a huge I'm story kidding, in about kidding, one kidding. minute. <laughs> uh, well, basically, uh, my background is at Google, as you mentioned. I started working at Google back in 2002 in the Google advertising department, which is called Google AdWords, and I helped them really from the ground up build the optimization team, the agency team. So I'm really involved. Uh, in terms of developing all the strategies and managing the high-end clients. I decided to leave Google and start working for myself as an internet entrepreneur in August of 2006. And that was because you know, there were just so many different things in terms of opportunities, in terms of what I felt like you know, the corporate lifestyle was not for me and internet entrepreneurship, you know, going around traveling the world, t-shirts and jeans, sometimes shorts. You know, it, it was just more of a lifestyle for me. So that was the path that I chose and never looked back since. You know, uh, started off really working from home, um, doing the whole internet marketing thing from home, and um, and then later on really expanded into uh, building different companies across the world. We have a team of a hundred people out in China just for outsourcing clients uh, for SEO and search engine marketing, things like that. Um, my partner actually focuses on that most of the time. What I mostly focus on now is going around and really traveling and, and speaking at seminars and doing my own workshops within the last year, traveled across 15 countries, uh, probably about 200 dates, you know, so you know, it is a, a pretty adventurous type career path that I chose for my business, uh, but at the same time, very much enjoying it because, you know, I get to meet people like you, get to, you know, come speak at events um, here in the UAE with you and uh, meet a lot of fellow speakers and great attendees as well, so having a blast. Fantastic. You were talking about the corporate world being too different, but from what I understand, the Google Plex is uh, very, very uh, chilled and relaxed. Is <laughs> that true? That is very true in terms of the culture itself. Uh, however, I I'll probably say you know over the course of the years, things have been changing a lot. I mean, you see during my presentations, pictures with me, you know, with all these different parties, all these different ski trips, Christmas parties, um, in t-shirts and shorts. And that was basically the Google culture. You know, they wanted to be bubbly, they wanted to be fun, and that was what it was. At the end of the day, however, it was a corporate environment. We were a client-facing department. We had clients come in every single day for client meetings. We were also traveling uh, for, the, for those client meetings all across America as well at the time. So we couldn't actually go into those meetings wearing t-shirts and shorts. You know, it was more corporate, it was more polished. So I would probably say, you know, I was just a little bit too spoiled <laughs> for my own good. You know, I, I started working at Google, and that was the culture. The whole company was that culture. And then later on, we kind of evolved into you know more corporate, more professional, and you know I'm just uh, too no spoiled. <laughs> just give us some uh, cool tips of what people need to do on their website and of their websites to actually get their their uh, websites optimized. Sure. The first thing that you absolutely must do is you need to know what keywords you're going to be optimizing for, because what many people make the mistake of doing is they're trying to optimize for everything under the sun that's related to their particular page. You know, if they're a traveling page, they want to have have you know keywords related to flights related to hotels related to flight attendants and you know all these fl travel accessories you know and all these things just aren't relevant and what we actually recommend is per page if possible optimize for anywhere between one to three keywords look into the title tags the meta tags the meta descriptions uh, and make sure that everything is optimized on page 
and, and this is actually not something that you know you need to learn from me just because it's standard search engine optimization training that anybody can teach the off-page stuff on the other hand is something that is a little bit more um, I would probably say proprietary in terms of what you can do to revolutionize and distinguish yourself from many of your competitors and that is basically um, the, the use of Google properties when Google is looking for what we're calling backlinks you know if you don't know what backlink is it basically means I say I'm, I'm a web page and we had you know 500 attendees let's just say that we are all websites if we if all 500 attendees stand up and point at me that is considered a backlink well in addition to just regular backlinks there's also something called authority backlinks which basically is in the eyes of Google they want to see other people who might be relevant or also high in authority point back at you so for example those 500 backlinks from those 500 attendees pointing at me standing up and saying hey I'm the internet marketing or Google marketing expert they're not gonna stand a chance against somebody like Ernesto for example who is very well known already in the industry and he stands up and he points at me and he says he is the Google expert so when Google looks at things like that they want to see things that are high in authority and for Google Google is Google's num <laughs> number one fan you know they like themselves the most so when you think about how you can leverage yourself and have a high authority website point back at you it's just as easy as creating a lot of Google property accounts like blogger owned by Google YouTube owned by Google Google profiles owned by Google Google sites owned by Google you know so basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out what Google considers to be high authority including the Google properties go ahead and create different links for that and then point it back to your own website using the keyword that you want to optimize for um, that's probably one of the very big things that many people are not using today because they're not so much aware of it they're still using you know a lot of the social media social networking web 2.0 sites which work to a certain extent but in terms of high authority not all of them are high in authority and for Google google.com it's just top of the top in the food chain you know when it comes to authority sites just give us some really quick pointers on uh, PPC sure. uh, pay-per-click uh, Google AdWords what is the best way what are the, 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 the elements that uh, for a very beginner to start uh, advertising and being successful on uh, Google AdWords because now it's very very expensive the clicks but I know sure. that there's ways in how you can actually reduce the cost right when it comes to pay-per-click just like when it comes to anything else that Google puts their hands on you know it, it all comes down to user experience and relevancy so when you want to have the best possible AdWords campaign a lot of people you know very similar to search engine optimization they try to find every keyword under the Sun and then they put them all into the same campaign into what they call the same ad group and things like that just like SEO you know you really want to be super targeted for Google they have an ad and you know those are the sponsored list listings if you don't know what it is go to google.com do a search the listings on the top you know, on the right hand side those are called the Google AdWords sponsored listings so what you want to do is because those ads are so small it only gives you 95 characters of space right so the first the first line is about 25 characters long uh, you don't have to fill up if you don't want to but it gives you that much space the, the remaining two lines are 35 characters what you want to do is you want to make those ads the text on those ads as relevant as possible now obviously there's a second component to that which is keywords so when you're optimizing for a certain page let's just say a UAE event or you know or a, an event in Dubai you want a keyword like Dubai seminar or Dubai seminars which is really really targeted and you don't want to have too many variations of it you can have Dubai seminar Dubai internet marketing seminar Dubai internet seminar and put those all in the same ad group so in the ad text you can then put Dubai internet marketing seminar they, that gives you enough room right so you want to be as targeted as possible um, but if you have, obviously you want different variations to get more exposure so you want like maybe Ab Abu Dhabi internet marketing seminar or uh, internet marketing events internet marketing workshop those should all be separated out into different ad groups so that you can actually put those keywords absolutely you know the the, the four most important keywords internet marketing seminar Dubai right you want them all within the ad text and for different ads you can have different words you know that are basically accommodating for whatever your keywords are uh, where can uh, the audience can actually find out more about you? Uh, 
connect with me on social media. You can go to my website, simonleon.com, S-I-M-O-N-L-E-U-N-G.com. Uh, that's also my username for Facebook and Twitter, so facebook.com forward slash Simon Leon, twitter.com forward slash Simon Leon. I look forward to connecting with all of you. Fantastic. Simon, thank you for, uh, for uh, being here on the show. And now it's time that we go for Triple Your Internet Intelligence. Hi, I'm Hartmut. I'm an engineer at Google. Hi, I'm Shailesh, product manager at Google. We're here to introduce Google Goggles, a visual search application for Android phones. Until now, the only option for web search has been typing or speaking. Now you can search by taking a photo. Let's try this book. Just open Google Goggles, fill as much of the screen as possible with the object, and take a picture. You'll see the exact book match in the search results without typing or saying a word. Another good use is on a business card. Let's try mine. Frame the text you're interested in well. Google Goggles will recognize the text and return a result. Now I can click to call Shalesh or add him to my contacts. Let's go out and see what else Google Goggles can do. We can figure out the title and artist of this painting. Or landmark information. And when you're traveling places where you don't know the language, Goggles can translate text for you. Just take a picture, for example, of a menu. Visual search technology is still in its early stages. It works best on things like we saw today. But it doesn't work well yet on things like food, cars, plants, or animals. As this technology advances, you will be able to do more cool things like suggesting a move in a chess game or taking a picture of a leaf to identify the plant. You might wonder what happens to all these pictures you're taking. You can choose to discard them as soon as the search is done or save them to your search history to view them at any time. It's available for Android powered phones now. To download, go to the Android market and search for Google Goggles. Well, I hope that you have really enjoyed the episode and make sure to watch us next week on the next episode of Amazing Websites Television. This is Ernesto Verdugo and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.